so I'm going to show you how you can get your design out of a file where it's flattened onto a white background and into your smart object. So here's my glitter tumbler. And um, I'm just gonna, no, not there. I'm gonna turn off the lid so it's not so distracting. Okay, so let's grab this mama bear file. This is one of my group members in Facebook. This is her file I'm using as an example. And um, so here's what you would do. You got this flat file and you need to get the design selected off of the white background. My favorite tool for this is the color um, selection tool. So if you click up into select color range, you get a um, eyedropper tool in here and you can just, you could click to select the bear or you could click to select the white background. Um, <coughs> I found that usually selecting the white background will give you a cleaner selection. Or if the bear was completely black and like really solid black color, that would make a pretty good selection too. But let's click on the white. Okay, you can't see anything happen yet but it has been selected and we hit okay. And now we can see some little marching ants here around the design where it's being selected, okay? All right, so right now the white is selected and the bear isn't. We want to uh, invert that so that the bear is selected and the white isn't because then we're gonna copy the bear and we're gonna paste it onto a new layer that has no background. Okay, so we go up and we say select inverse. Now the bear is selected and we'll hit edit copy. And we just hit edit paste and it pops over onto a new layer over here that is just the bear. I hide the background, you can see it's been selected. So you could probably go with just this as is and bring it into the smart object over here onto your mug, but um, I was practicing with this a little bit earlier and I did notice that the selection wasn't very clean. So I wanna show you how do you can test that and make sure you have a nice clean selection. Um, some extra, like extra credit things you can do uh, to make sure things look good. Because um, if we go ahead and use it right now, it, it looks a little bumpy around the edges. In fact, let's, let's go ahead and do that so you can see what that looks like. So. What you can do is you can just hit select all and then hit edit, copy. We're on the bare layer, that's where we select it all. We hit copy and we'll go over to the tumbler. We'll double click on the smart object, which is this red layer right here, this box, double click it. It's gonna open a new tab where the hello there is. I'm gonna hide that. And we're just gonna hit paste. We'll say edit, paste. It comes in big, we need to make it smaller. So I'm gonna hit Command T to transform it. And we're just gonna fit it right to, oops, I forgot to constrain my edges. If I hold Shift while I'm dragging a corner, it'll be constrained so it doesn't stretch out of shape. All right, so here's our mama bear right there. If I hit Save, go back to the original stainless file, you can see it on the tumbler and you could call it good at this point. You could say, I'm done, looks great. And if you wanted to change what color it was, like if you can see that this effects layer right here, where it has this little eyeball, it says effects under that says color overlay. This is what's making it white. If I hide that, it goes to its original blue color. And if we were to zoom in, we can start seeing some of the flaws where there's kind of a white fringe around the edges where the blue got lighter. And to make this look more natural, we would delete that fringe. It's not very noticeable when you're zoomed out. But if you had, let's go back to the smart object. If we had pasted it in and left it large, I think you would see the flaws. So if I hit save again, you always have to hit save and go back. You can see it looks very flawed here. Like you can see little dusty looking spots around the edges and through the, the cutout parts. So we would want to clean this up. So it's up to you at this point. You could 
<clears throat> say, no, nope, that's good. I, I know enough. And this right here was exactly what I needed. And, you know, I'm good to go. And I want to color it white. Or you could even change the color by clicking on color overlay, choosing some other color in here, hitting OK. So you could change the color of it too at this point. But if you want a little extra credit, <laughs> you want to go back and clean up that original file. Let's go back to that. So we'll go back to Mama Bear. And I'm going to put a layer underneath it and fill that with a color so it's easy to see the, the, the parts that are sitting in the transparent area right now. So if I click on background and then make a new layer by clicking the little dog ear down here, I can fill that with my foreground color. So over here in the corner, I have these two squares. The white is a foreground and the background is kind of a brown right now. I'm going to double click or single click on the foreground, the white color. I'm going to pick just a different color. Let's pick green. Okay, now my foreground color is green. And that's important because we're going to fill this layer. Let's, let's name it color. We're going to fill that with green just so this is only so you can see our bear more easily. So if we go up to edit, fill, remember you have to be on your color layer to do this, and you pick foreground color, and it's 100% opacity. Okay, okay, and there we go. Now, as things are still selected. I'm going to deselect. So you can hit Command D or just go up to the Select menu and click Deselect. And I'm going to zoom in. I have my magnifying glass, or I can hit Command Plus on my Mac, and that zooms in. We can kind of see where there are some issues here. See, it just looks like there's a white border around the whole thing. So I found that the best way to get rid of that is the following steps. Okay, so I'm going to hit Command minus to zoom out a little. Go up to your bear layer, hit Command on your keyboard, and then click on the bear. And you can see how my, my pointer, my little hand, changes from a regular hand to a hand with a little square with a dotted line around it. If you're on a PC, you might have to click, I don't know, control or something. So I'm hitting command on my Mac and then I click on the bear and now it's selected. The selection includes that ugly white uh, border thing around the edge. So we want to change our selection so it doesn't include that white part. So we go to select, modify, contract. We're just going to contract it one pixel in because if, when I zoomed in, I noticed that this white line around the outside really only is the size of one square, one little pixel. So we'll hit OK. Now our dotted lines have moved in, so the white stuff is, is not selected anymore. I'm going to zoom out. Okay, so what's happening at this point is we have a better selection of the blue, and the ugly stuff is, is not selected. So we want to use our invert tool again. We'll say select, inverse, so that we've selected everything that's not the bear. And we're simply going to hit delete on the keyboard. All right, so some of that white has gone away. If I zoom in again, I can see it looks cleaner. If I kind of scroll over here, there's a few spots that I've missed. You could actually come in here with your eraser and delete those white bits. Um, and also, if you still saw a significant amount of white around the edges, you could literally delete again. So I zoomed out and I noticed that. Um, I can see some other flaws in the blue area. So we'll talk about that next. But if I wanted to, I could just say done at this point, or I could hit delete again, and it would just delete a tiny bit more in and get rid of that white stuff. So I'm going to hit deselect by hitting Command D on my keyboard. Now, like I said, you still have this flaw right here where there's some white. Um, sorry, we're seeing some grid lines here. I'm going to hide those because it makes it hard for you to see. I'm going to turn off the pixel grid. Okay, that's easier. So you see this white bit right here? I'm just going to go ahead and erase that. So we'll go over to the Erase tool, um, which is right here, but you can also just hit E on your keyboard. And I have a little tiny brush. I can make it bigger by hitting the right bracket on my keyboard or smaller by hitting the left bracket. Make it nice and small. And I'm just going to go in here and click and then hit Shift, and then it goes into like a line. Of deleting. There, that's better. 
if I wanted to make the blue look a little nicer, see it looks kind of rough and pixelated here, I could literally go in here and I could grab the eyedropper tool and grab some of the blue and then take our brush and brush over those parts. I don't know if you can see this, but it's just smoothing it out. But this is kind of, this is going above and beyond. You don't necessarily have to do this unless you're really dissatisfied with how it's turning out in your mock-up. If I hit command one, it zooms all the way out. Okay, we can delete that green. We don't need that anymore. Now we just have the bear. Another handy thing would be to save this file. Just save it as a PSD. Just so you have it later, because you've already saved it. You could also save it as a PNG, and it would be just ready to drag in. Um, that might actually be better. Let's do that. File, save as. PNG, and save it into your folder. So now you have it later. You don't have to worry about like selecting it again. Okay, so let's do what we did before. Now we have our beautifully clean cut mama bear. We're gonna hit select all, edit, copy. We're gonna go back to our original file. I actually, you can't see it over here, but I still have the old smart object PSB is, tab is over here. But if we had closed it, we would just go to the original file and we would double click on the smart object layer again, and it would open it up. Um, so we can hide the one that's there and we can just hit paste, hit command T, hold our shift and drag from the corner so it doesn't get stretched out of proportion. I just hold shift, I drag, and then I let go of all the keys and then I can go in and move it around. And then I can I can do that again. Okay, hit return. There it is. Now we have to hit save. Go back to the original file. And there it is. And if we zoom in, it's looking pretty clean. I think that looks great. If we wanted to test it again, we could just leave it big and hit save. How does it look when it's big? That looks pretty crisp too, I gotta say. So I think we've successfully saved out this file in a way that is looking good and clean. It's a clean selection. And there you go. Now, if you have purchased a cut file from someone and it's already a PNG file, you don't have to do any of this. You would just grab the PNG file and drag it in directly. Like you wouldn't have to do this whole selection bit. So let me just close this. I'll save and I'll close the smart object layer. So remember I saved it as a PNG a second ago. So that's sitting right here in this, in this file. Now let's go back in here and we'll pretend that there wasn't anything, none of these bears were here. So you just had the original file, okay? And it looked like this. And then you had your PNG bear file, your cut file that you already purchased. So it's already on a transparent background. All you would do is go into your main file here, you double click to open the smart object. Then you can go open up this window kind of on top of it and then grab that mama bear ping and just drag it right into your screen. And it comes right in and you hit return and you can hide the hello there. Comes in as a smart object, which means that you can size it up and it probably won't lose quality, but it automatically kind of squeezed itself tiny to fit into here. Um, if that bugs you, if you don't want to size it up, because usually it's not safe to size things up if you're feeling weird about that, I would say grab your PNG and drag it down onto this Photoshop icon so it opens up by itself. And then from there, you can select all, hit copy, go to the smart object and paste, and it would come in a little bit bigger. So hopefully that, that hasn't confused you. I just wanted to give you all the information in one spot. But I actually liked it small. So let's do what we did a second ago, which was to just drag it right in and hit return and hit save. And there it is. And again, you can turn off the effects or you can double click color overlay and pick some other color if you would like to change the shade at this point. I hope this helps.